Hello, welcome to VK3 CRG's shack, uh, located in Lara, just out of Geelong, about 30 minutes away from Melbourne. Um, my main uh, interest in amateur radio at the moment is HF, of course. Uh, now I'm out of the apartment in Melbourne, I'm able to now do uh, HF, which I quite like. I bought myself a new radio here, which is the ICOM uh, 7600, and uh, very happy with it. Um. It's a very nice radio and um, slowly learning how to work it uh, and uh, read the uh, band scope, etc. My other interest, uh, or new interest if you like, in amateur radio is IRLP. I quite, in, I quite enjoy uh, being able to pick up my uh, handheld radio here and be able to speak to people all over the world. Uh, this morning on IRLP I spoke to a bus driver, a school bus driver in uh, San Diego. Uh, he was waiting for his students to board the bus, waiting for school to finish, and uh, I'm sitting in my uh, in my lounge room out there speaking to him on my little uh, handheld radio. So IRLP, as you're no doubt aware, uh, if you're an amateur operator, is the Internet uh, Repeater Linking Program. If you're not uh, an amateur radio operator, it basically enables uh, amateur radios to be connected via the Internet, and uh, that's done via a series of nodes, this is a, an IRLP node here, the thing with the blue light on it. Um, and these nodes are a, normally a simplex uh, node, so you use the one frequency to transmit and receive. Uh, they also, uh, you can also connect the node to a repeater, so that uh, a repeater, which covers a large area, of course, and uh, you know, can receive signals uh, uh, from all around uh, an area and retransmit them from a high spot. Uh, you can also connect an echo link and IRLP node as well. IRLP um, is pretty, it's very similar to Echo Link. With Echo Link as well, you can also use your mobile phone. Um, there's apps for, uh, for many phones, including the iPhone, which allow you to connect uh, into um, uh, uh, Echo Link. So there's a, an Echo Link application here I can show you. And uh, with that, I can actually connect to my IRLP node, uh, sorry, to my Echolink node. Um, so no matter where I am in the world, as long as there's data coverage, I'm able to um, log into Echolink. So what we'll do now is I'll show you inside the uh, uh, IRLP Echolink node. And we'll give you an idea of how it's connected up and what's actually inside the box. The two main components that go into making an Echolink node are, of course, the node itself, which is a 1AU box in this case, and of course the radio. The radio you'll notice has no microphone connected, and that's of course because the audio in and out of the radio is fed into the node. So we'll take the lid off. Now inside there's my node ID. Have a listen to this. perfectly timed and unintentional. Uh, that's an announcement I have on every 15 minutes or thereabouts on that frequency of 145.250 just to let people know that there is an IRLP node active in the area. This is the IRLP board. There's three different components uh, inside this box. We have the IRLP board, the interface board here, which controls, as you would have seen when the push to talk um, light was on, it was red and that then controls the radio to transmit. When the radio is receiving a signal, uh, if I transmit, you'll see that uh, another LED comes on down there. It's hard to see under all the light. But uh, yeah, that board there controls the, uh, the radio and also uh, feeds the VoIP, if you like, in and out of the internet. So that is your interface. That is an, an IRLP interface card, a version 3 card it's called and uh, they're available for about a hundred dollars um, from IRLP.net. Um, David Cameron who uh, is the creator of IRLP uh, sells those boards. Uh, quite a versatile thing and very easy to put in. It runs off an, uh, an IDE card, an IDE cable. So you can just use a spare computer, plug it in, interface it, uh, audio and plug this into uh, your computer and away you go. Okay, now 
what this middle board is is a computer this is a one gigahertz uh, computer is a fanless design that's very cool to touch um, this is what's called an embedded node which means that everything is all together this unit down here is an IDE flash drive a 256 IDE you can actually see it's plugged into a memory slot um, down below there could add another one if I wanted to so that's um, the computer and that is running Linux uh, a, a customized version of Linux and this then interfaces here uh, via the parallel cable so that's what that is uh, and of course the power supply system over here there's a couple of different ways you can do this if you buy an embedded node if you buy one ready built you can actually buy uh, you have a couple of different power supply options uh, this one here what, what we've got is um, the power supply option I think it lets you run between about uh, 12 volts and about 28 or thereabouts um, so that gives you quite a wide scope otherwise you have to run 12 volts not 13.8 but 12 volts otherwise the computer uh, will uh, will go south on you and you don't want that in a big pile of smoke and of course the radio on the back of the IRLP node we have the IRLP cable which comes straight out of um, the actual uh, IRLP board it's a D9 connector I've also stuck a ferrite on there because I was having trouble with RF uh, when I was testing it and setting it up with my uh, 5 watt handheld RF was getting into this uh, into the uh, IRLP board and uh, making things a bit difficult so I stuck that on there and I just haven't taken it off yet I think it's probably better just to leave it there the internet or data connection there which of course connects into the uh, uh, into a CAC cable which goes to the internet I'll talk about that in a sec and of course the power cable which is here which I've also stuck a ferrite on as well because I didn't think it would hurt I wasn't sure where the RF was getting in so I thought probably best just to stick one on uh, on both the power and the D9 the power of course goes to the power supply which uh, in this case is a 30 amp power supply now this is idling at the moment and as you can see the ammeter is not even moving it's uh, basically nothing if um, if the unit does transmit it uh, doesn't draw that much current in fact I can request it to uh, tell me the time so if I go the time is 7.04 p.m. there you go so it's basically the radio it's drawing about 12 amps I think the radio puts out about 55 or 60 watts or something on 2 meters. So the connection is IRLP out or end in. This carries the audio as well. Because the computer's here in the box, I don't need to run separate audio cables. It's all carried through this cable here. If this was a separate IRLP box and a separate computer, I would need to run audio cables between the two. So on the back of the radio the IRLP goes in there that's the data connection of course the power and the antenna so that's basically it it's pretty simple the radio is controlled transmit when it's transmitting when it's receiving etc via this node okay now uh, I have set a, a CTC double S tone on there of 91.5 I didn't have that set up at first with IRLP there's things called reflectors and what reflectors do, I can in fact dial into one uh, the biggest reflector is called the Win System Reflector and that's node number 9100 so to access that, let's, uh, let's do that now I can just uh, transmit and type in 9100 and uh, I'm off and running so if I transmit now Okay, a reflector. There we go. Bad lighting. A reflector is like a big party line. It's hundreds of repeaters around the world that are connected to one big node. And you can see that the receive light there is on at the moment. It was. I'm having a bit of trouble focusing at the moment. There we go. So that's the push to talk light. And of course, the radio is transmitting that at the moment. So, uh, we're now listening to two guys speak in the US. Okay, there we go. And so that this is a reflector. Now, what, what was happening with my node was that I was picking up some local interference that was just breaking through the squelch. And what that was doing was sending that of audio, if you like, out into the reflector. 
it then got pinged around the world to these hundreds of repeaters that then transmitted it which then of course sent their audio back into the reflector which then came back here to mine which then pinged it and it just kept pinging around the world <laughs> what they tend to do in that case is they they find out which node's doing it and they ban it and it's an automatic ban it's quite a common problem so um, I found it better to put a CTC double S tone on so that that didn't happen anymore something else I'd like to run through is involving an iPhone or a smartphone, it doesn't have to be an iPhone, the Echo Link application. With IRLP, you need to be on a radio. You cannot use another device. But with Echo Link, by just having my smartphone with me anywhere in the world, I can connect to any Echo Link node and be on amateur radio. So I could be on the bus or anywhere talking. As long as there's data coverage, I can then connect myself to an Echo Link node. So if I go to, here's one in New Zealand that I quite often connect to, ZL2ARG in Nelson in New Zealand. Now this is nothing, I'm not using a radio, I'm using my phone. So if I hit that and I connect to it, we'll, uh, we'll hear what happens when I connect. Kia welcome to ZL2ARG repeater, situated high above Nelson, at the top of the South Island of New Zealand. So there we go. Uh, by hitting the transmit button, obviously I would be transmitting. So I'll end that. I'm now disconnected. And I can actually connect to my own node if I want to. And I, I will be able to hear that on my uh, handy talkie on my uh, radio here. So let's try it. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll connect to, uh, to my node. Oop. There we go. Connecting to Echo Link VK3CRG. Connected. Okay, so now I can actually talk on my own node by hitting the transmit button and that, that audio is coming out of the radio. So I can uh, hit end and disconnect. VK3CRG disconnected. So it's a bit of a mishmash really between the internet and amateur radio. A lot of people were predicting the end of amateur radio of course with the internet. But I think it's sort of enhanced it in a way, because with a, a little radio like this, or even a phone, you can be walking down the street, you can be anywhere in the world, and remain in touch with your amateur radio friends. I also have online a video of me in San Francisco chatting to my friends uh, back home here in Australia, and I've also got other video I haven't put up yet of me on an Amtrak train in the absolute middle of nowhere, in, <laughs> in Arizona and uh, New Mexico, and uh, right in the outback of, uh, of uh, the United States, again, chatting to my friends while hurtling along at 140 k's an hour on an Amtrak train. So uh, I think IRLP is a, is a good thing. It's a good technology. It also uh, gives people a taste of, uh, a little bit of a taste of what HF is like and how exciting it can be to talk to people on the other side of the world. W9 stroke VK3, Charlie Romeo Golf. W9 stroke VK3, Charlie Romeo Golf, portable in Chicago. Uh, mobile on an Amtrak train, just leaving Union Station. Hi there, Braden. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yep, I've got you now. <clears throat> oh, very good. Okay, and hello to Ron if you're on the side. Sorry about that before. Uh, the railway station is, is much like Flinders Street in Melbourne, whereby uh, it's all covered over. It's like tunnels until you actually pull out of the station. Well, I'm on the sleeper train now, the Amtrak train, heading to um, heading to Chicago, heading to New York. Um, so that should be good. I'll be there uh, this time tomorrow. Um, the time here now is about 9.36 p.m. on Friday evening. So uh, I'll be there at about 6 p.m. Uh, tomorrow evening, our time. Um, all right, Braden, nice to hear you. I don't know if Ron's still there. Um, I'll hand over to him. Ron, are you still about? That was great. Um, yeah. Caught up to you uh, yesterday as you were leaving uh, Chicago, and uh, yeah, now you're just pulling in at uh, New York. Oh, that, that's, that's brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, young Trevor's on the side. He uh, told me that you were here. I uh, don't know if he's uh, uh, going to fire up and, uh, and have a chat to you, but uh, um, PK3 FTRE is on the side uh, as well there. Uh, Sure, 
FTRE and the group. This is W2 stroke VK3 Charlie Romeo Golf Portable Amtrak train heading into Penn Station, New York. G'day Trevor, great to hear you there uh, mate. You're coming in well into the repeater. Mum and Dad are having an absolute ball. This has been a beautiful trip. I, I, I mean flying is much quicker but uh, on the train you just get to see everything. So I've come all the way across from Los Angeles up to uh, Chicago and now, uh, I've just turned the camera, I'm actually putting this on, on, turn the camera around up there, you can see the city. I've actually uh, got a friend here filming at the moment, so when you guys, uh, when I get back, uh, if you zoom in on the city, um, I'll actually show you this video. <laughs> you can see I'm on the train and I'm on my little handheld there, Trevor. Great to hear you, both of you coming in really well. I was hoping to catch up with a friend of mine, VK3 STV, Steve. I spoke to Braden yesterday, I've spoken to Rocky, um, I've spoken to quite a few, but Rob, I've uh, spoken to quite a few people and Ron of course and uh, I just passed past a station there called Yonkers <laughs> which is a suburb of New York so uh, we're not too far away probably about 30 minutes away from the station and uh, I can see uh, the tall buildings of New York up there ahead of me. Um, back to you there Ron um, and uh, yeah I'll, uh, I'll take it with you and I've forgotten you. Oh, it's MJR isn't it? VK3 MJR in the group this is W2 stroke VK3 Charlie Romeo Golf Portable New York Something I have been asked is how would I connect my node to the internet because uh, because it runs a special version of Linux you can't just plug a USB stick in the back and it's going to work. What I did was I got one of these Netgear units, they're about $100 and it's actually a uh, Wi-Fi extender. You just plug it in to the wall, put up the antennas, hit the button and it basically picks up your Wi-Fi signal from elsewhere in the house and retransmits it in case you have any dead zones or whatever. But also on the side of it, as you can see, it has a cat cable connection. So I'm using that to connect to the uh, uh, IRLP node, and that's how I get my Wi-Fi in here. Uh, it's a pity that uh, you can't just plug a Wi-Fi stick into it, and I'm sure future versions of the hardware um, and the software will, will allow you to do that. But for now, that, that's a great solution. It's a Wi-Fi extender, so because I live in a rather large house, I now get full coverage in my house rather than have a few dead spots, and I have the added bonus, I'm using it as a Wi-Fi bridge to bring Wi-Fi uh, in here, and I can then connect my uh, IRLP node into the side of it. Something worth considering. Well, I hope that's given you a, uh, a brief overview of what IRLP and Echolink are all about. Echolink can be a little more tricky because each node can have separate codes for getting into it. Some of them are club nodes only, which require a certain code to get into the node. Mine though is an open node, so if you're in Lara, you're welcome to use it. The details of the node are up on the screen, and also you can check out the node website that I've set up, which is irlpnode.net, and uh, check that out as well. 73, any questions you have, please send me a message. I'll be trying, uh, more than happy to help you out. 73 from VK3 CRG in Lara, near Geelong, in Victoria, Australia.